So, um, yeah, great. Well, first of all, Alex, thanks so much for joining. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Sure thing, sure thing. So um, we're at uh, one minute past the hour, so let's uh, kick this off uh, officially. Uh, so everyone, welcome to the, well, to the show, The Modular Clubhouse, uh, where we have open Q&A and, uh, and interviews with people in the, in the modular synth space. And today I am honored to have Alex from WMD here with me. Uh, for those of you joining for the first time, uh, this is of course the companion show to the um, well, the Modular Clubhouse YouTube channel. And as always, if you've got any links you want to drop, any questions you want to ask in the meantime, uh, or if you're un, uh, willing or incapable of uh, joining on stage, but you still want to ask a question, just use the well the companion app and you can uh, drop anything there. So um, without further ado, let's, uh, let's, let's kick this off. So uh, Alex, what have you been up to today? Anything special happen? Uh, not too much, just the normal stuff, man. Mm -hmm. So how's a typical day for you looking nowadays? Um, I am working on just getting, uh, I answer emails over the, in the morning and then talk to dealers throughout the day, just trying to get stuff um, organized and moving and then I coordinate with the shipping guys to do that mm -hmm. and then any, um, any uh, after any spare time I have I spend making content for YouTube splendid 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 yeah, so so how, how has that evolved from the from the actual start so if you if you go back what was your uh, your musical upbringing how is the, how, how did all of that happen um, I've been playing music my whole life um, I got into electronic music in college as uh, band members became less and less reliable. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I played in a touring band for a while, um, did lots of stuff like that, um, then st and, and was producing music for that. So I was producing and writing all the songs, or most of the songs for, the, um, for that band, and then uh, we got some more members. It was originally a duo, and then we kind of got more into the band side of things. But um, you know, touring's a hard life. So uh, mm -hmm. I had a job at WMD at the time, but I was just building stuff. Yeah. But then as we got more busy, and William's life became more complex, I started taking on more roles. And now I don't build anything at all. I just do all the all the all the logistical stuff he does he doesn't want to do anymore. <laughs> <laughs> which is of course not a not a bad place to be in of course or do you miss yeah. that actual building part as well uh i mean it's nice just to have a you know not have to be creative and just like have someone just tell you what to do and then you just do it mm -hmm. um, i do definitely miss just showing up to work and having a task of build 200 of these and i just do that you know um this is a lot more like time management and um, and creativity goes into this because it's, you know, some days are busy with email, some days aren't as busy. And just to keep myself busy, I got to, you know, uh, decide what I'm going to do and do research when I want to do research. Um, I do a lot of product development with the team. So I test a lot, I play a lot, which is amazing. I'm very <laughs> thankful for that. Um, I get to play music every single day. Um, mm -hmm. and get paid for it as well but just to test you know oh great great and well so how how is that that whole thing coming about so what how did you actually get involved uh, with that WMD um, I don't expect you just dropped in a, a job application right like that I mean it was um Basically, I started when he was in his garage still. So I started in 2013 mm -hmm. with the company. And um, we were, it was in William's garage. And one of my friends uh, that I met in college was moving. And he had been working for him for a while as a builder. And he got the job just by sending him an email and asking him if he needed help. And he did. So he had that <laughs> job for, I think he was with him for four years. And then he moved. So he hit me up and I... I was like, absolutely. So I was working at a, a music store, like an online music store. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I would work full days there, and then I would go over to WMD around 6, and I'd work from 6 to 10. 
And I did that for about three months just like to show him that I really gave a shit and that I cared. And, um, and then when we moved, we moved from his garage to um, like a smaller warehouse than what we have now, but into our first actual building. And um, that was when I got put on full time as a full time builder, is once we had that space. Because in his garage, you know, it's a 400 square foot space, and you could only have two or three people in there at a time. So me working nights really worked well, but as far as me moving to full time, uh, the space kind of dictated that. So once we got the space, um, was we did that, and he was in his garage for five years, and I luckily joined t- like three months before he moved into the new space, so I got mm-hmm. in kind of right at the right time. Yeah, and you were in a in a bigger space than that uh, currently, right? Yeah, so it was that was the first space is fourteen hundred square feet, and then, um, and I think it was twenty fifteen we moved into um, thirty thirty six hundred. And wow. then we just doubled that so uh, in 2019. So we're at uh, 7,200 square feet now, which is pretty amazing. But now that COVID has happened, like most of us are at home. So it's not empty space by any means. It's definitely like filled with machines and lots of stuff going on, but just not as much, not as many people and not as much culture as there was at one point. Yeah. And do you foresee that changing in the in the coming weeks or months? Or do you think that that's going to be, well, uh, the way forward for, for WMD? It's probably the way forward. I mean, just as far as like things go until COVID is like completely over, you know, we can't afford to tell everybody to come back. Yeah. And spend the time to do that and then have us just be sent home again. So what we did is We gave, um, like William and I both used to have offices and we gave them up and we uh, gave them to the managers there. Mm -hmm. So two managers now have their own own, um, spaces. We were able to put um, testing in the room that uh, used to be the production room. And we kind of use that more for like training now. So when we hire people, people come in and we train them like one or two people in one room, you know, and then when uh, they're ready, then they take all their stuff and take tools home and desks home and everything. Um, People actually build modules at their houses and then switch back every every week. And it works pretty well. Um, I don't see William, I don't see William uh, wanting to make a change. I don't see him wanting to go back to the office. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I like, it's, it's a, it's fine. I get lonely, you know, <laughs> being <laughs> home all day every day in a studio, but it's cool still. But I don't know. I think we're I think we're gonna be like this for quite a while, at least through winter. I mean, I don't really. No, I think no, I, I think you're right. I think that's still gonna be. I'm still well. <laughs> I'm still holding on and making sure that no nothing gets any worse, whether we were here in Europe or in the in the U.S. Because um, yeah, we need to get through this winter first. I think. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, absolutely. So you've been Mm -hmm. plan and clubs, like really cool things happening in clubs pretty soon. And I'm just like crossing my fingers that they actually happen. Yeah. So that's one of the questions I also had is how are your um, uh, the plans? Well, shows that you have in in, in Denver, how are those coming along nowadays? If they are at, at, at all? And they're great. I got playing with Richard Devine this Saturday at a club great. called the Black Box. Um, and uh, d- uh, direct support for that. So I'm really excited. It's a really nice big club with a Function One sound system. And, uh, it's going to be super fun. And then I've um, managed to talk with the, uh, the owner of that club. And um, we just solidified that we will be doing a monthly at uh, the same club in their front room. So the, the big room that Richard's playing in is a f- like 350 cap. Mm-hmm. And the room that we're going to be in is 150 but it still has a stack of function one subs and really nice tops and stuff. So we are, um, we are slated to start our new monthly dance party, uh, December, um, the third week of December. So we're doing uh, third Fridays. So I'm really excited about that. So things are looking up, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, great. Unfortunately, it's not, it's not, it's, it's not something I can just spend uh, just coming along for a Friday, but still, if I'm in the area, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. For sure, and Free Boutique's still rolling really well, and um, 
you know, I think everybody's really happy to have that back. We're really excited and we're going to keep Free Critique going. We're going to keep it at the same venue it's always been at, Fort Green. Um, it's an amazing place with an amazing staff and they just treat us really well. So we're going to keep Free Critique there. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we've, I don't remember when we brought it back to in person, but it's been fun. We're doing mostly local performers now and then uh, occasionally we still stream somebody in. Mm-hmm. And we actually put a tape, like a TV out and let everybody like see some, see the streamer playing through the sound system. So that's pretty fun. Oh, that's great. That's great. Just to have that, that, that hybrid approach, even in, uh, in today's day and age. Yeah. I just, you know, like we made so many cool contacts. Like we just like the community grew so much and it's just like such a shame that like we go back to going local and like we don't have that community anymore and it's like all it takes is an ethernet connection like we're good so yeah absolutely so we just decided to start doing that yeah that's really impressive that's really impressive so in regards to your um um to to wmd as a company so how how many people do you currently have within wmd in total i think it's about 18 right now wow that's significant right yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah, for at least well, so we've got people from uh, the uh, well, the the mom and pop uh, uh, Euro rap makers all the way to the, to the bigger ones as well. But I think that with eighteen, you're probably right at the top of the well, the Euro rap maker sizes, right? Um, so if you could, well, of course, one of the things I do want to talk about is of course the Kraken and how that came to be. Uh, is that something that you have been working? hands-on with except to the the testing and the and the showcasing of course because your videos were of course brilliant on the kraken but yeah 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 absolutely i mean um so all the drum modules have been programmed by our software designer mason um he goes by vino mallow you'll see him play live yeah. every once in a while free boutique and things like that um and yeah he's a genius man he's just really good and Basically, like, it's all just, like, we have an idea and we have, like, a hole that we want to fill, you know? That's kind of the idea. It's, like, what's the problem you're trying to solve or the hole that you're trying to fill or something like that? And, mm -hmm. You know, for that one, people have been asking us to make snare drum for a long time. Yeah. We, uh, we had the Crucible, and the Crucible was, like, a major breakthrough, and that was, like, one of the ones that he thought was, like, one of the most fun project projects for him. Um, and I, it's really like the concept usually starts out like just with like, you know, the scientific method. So I think we could probably do do something like a resonator if we did some sort of car plus strong idea. Mm -hmm. And then Mason's idea was to use um, for physical modeling was to try and make a 3D model rather than just a 2D string like most car plus strong models. So um, you know, I'm not an engineer. I don't really know exactly what's going on there. But what he would do is he started in Bitwig and he would use the grid in Bitwig. And you know, you can do, you can add delay lines and fil and and filters and you know all pass filters and and stuff like that to create these networks. And what he ended up doing was creating a mesh um, that instead of a string, it represents a surface. Mm -hmm. and he also did a lot of research on like these types of models and it's pretty interesting like it's the same model that people actually use to um hypothesize the strength of like bridge like a bridge like bridges uh structural integrity through like an earthquake right you shake yeah. it on this how much will it give so mm -hmm. it's kind of the same same algorithm uh except for we're just listening to it so as far as the snare goes the idea was to take some of the stuff we learned from Crucible and stuff that Mason had learned and then try to use that to create the sound of two heads in a resonant cavity because that's what a snare drum is. Yeah. Um, and then inject noise at a certain point and then let that cavity uh, always affect the noise. And so, you know, we didn't, we never really got to Tom because we were so excited on, <laughs> on snare. And so it's like, that's actually maybe something that we'll do down the road. But what we ended up doing was, what he ended up doing is figuring out, you know, a couple different methods. And I think he took like three times 
I think he tried three different like styles and then went back to the first one because he thought that was the best one. And then at first it was like over a hundred filters and delay lines and things like that. It was just way too complex to put on a microcontroller. Yeah. And he just did back and back and back as much as he could to fit it. And then once we could start prototyping, you know, we already had uh, the hardware built. We have a prototype like mm -hmm. platform module that we use for all those. And so then he was able to get into our hands. And then uh, myself, Matt and William, um, those are the, and, and Steven, that's the other people on the design team. We're all basically saying, we take it home, play with it, and then come back and say, you know, when I do this, it screams at me and it doesn't sound like a snare anymore. Like, <laughs> it should go higher in pitch or it should go lower in pitch and things like that. You know, like mm -hmm. we start working out the interface and, and, um, it's that first user acceptance test actually. Yeah. So we're all just like beta testers and, you know, we all play every day and, um, we're all making lots of music and Steven's, you know, a little bit more engineer minded. So it's good to hit, get him on there cause he can give me some ideas. And luckily I've been doing this long enough that I've learned, you know, the way to speak to the engineers and not make them <laughs> mad, but give them, I try and give them ideas, you know, yeah, really make that, them. that, uh, that translation from the field back to the, to the engineer. Yeah, exactly. Brilliant. So how, how, how does it feel? when Kraken was released and it was almost unanimously positive. And I think I'm not lying if I'm saying that this has now become the, well, the, the go-to, well, uh, snare module for everyone within Eurorack. Uh, it's become one of those staples that you should have. How did that feel when that actually happens and when that news and that experience reached WMD? And it feels great. It's, you know, we're really excited. I think that we're kind of, we're still a small company and we're still making low, you know, lower quantities than you might expect and lower quantities than people like Roland and, you know, the, the mainstream like instrument companies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think we're always kind of on the search for bigger and better things. But I mean, it's for me, it's just a weight off my shoulders because to me, it's like I kind of am the face of WMD sales and I do all the videos and then I, ha I, I organize all the sales with all the dealers and um do all of that so like you know when 500 of something ship in a week it's like it's a pretty good feeling for sure <laughs> and from a, from a, from a numbers perspective and i'm not not, not necessarily uh I, i'm not i don't want to know your sales numbers but has the kraken has that surpassed uh, the other modules or do you still think well there are other modules in your current lineup that still outperform kraken I mean, I think they're all pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. uh, Kraken, I would say, probably had a better initial release mm -hmm. than all of them. But I also can credit, I think I can credit that to like just the organization of how we were able to actually get it done. And we didn't scramble at all. We didn't rush it. We didn't worry about if it's going to come out this week or the next week. And then yeah. we, we have a policy with bigger modules that we seldomly can actually keep, but this one we did really well on that's, we wait until we have as many modules as we think we need before we um, announce any sort of date. And then yeah. we always put the date like at least two or three weeks away from that. And so it's usually like, you know, I, and I'm guilty of jumping the gun a lot where I just get excited you know, <laughs> and I do something, but you know, with this one, we were really patient with it. And I think that the fact that we were able to just say, like, it's out and it's in stores, like, was huge. Because, like, for us, you know, it's so tempting to say, hey, here's this thing. Everybody get excited about it and start talking about it. But yeah. then, you know, maybe it comes up and it doesn't come out for another month. Yeah, indeed. So that that's, of course, one thing that I think that the, well, let's call it the maturity within WMD, can lead to such a, well, let's say a well-executed release program, uh, which is of course something that is counterintuitive when you do have built, or if you are building something very neat, you want to share that with the world, but you do indeed know that if you hold hold on to it until a uh, until the right time, the, well, the, the payback will be that much better. So did yeah. you did you have any leaks during that time? 
Oh yeah, we had a few. Oh. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just like pretty easy stuff. Like uh, a couple of retailers just accidentally put it up, and then people found them. And but everybody was actually pretty cool. Like uh, I was really excited to see that when the leaks did happen, like they didn't go straight to like Muff Wiggler, like or Mod Wiggler, like they used to, and they didn't go straight to Facebook. They like went to their individual discords yeah and like all the li these little discord communities were getting excited because they felt like they had like you know the scoop <laughs> early access to, to information but then they also like respected that they didn't want to like be the one to like leak it wider than that and i joined a couple of the discords because i had heard about them and um and it was just like i'm not going to say anything it's super cool that, that, that this is happening <laughs> and like Leaks for us, like, could go, I mean, I think that it's probably a good thing. It's just, um, we just really want, like, to be able, for you to be able to find out about it and then just go buy it if you want it. Like, I think I come from music marketing and, you know, there's so long there where it was like, we're going to say, here's the single, and I still do this, but it's like, here's the single, and then... You know, another month later, it's like, hey, I'm putting out an album, and I'm going to put it out in two weeks. Get excited. It's like, dude, it's music. Like, let me listen to it. You yeah, know? indeed. And I think that that's a thing, especially these days with music, where it's like, you know, uh, like a week before announcement is like as long as I think you should give before, like, people can go buy it. Because you can give them a heads up and then go pre-save it or whatever that you want them to do. Yeah. You can pre-order and things like that. You can build a little bit of anticipation, but... I just think that with music these days, it's like because it's become such an instant gratification game, it's like just makes so much more sense to release music like quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think that I'm taking lessons from that with modular. I think that it's kind of yeah. the same philosophy. It's just like put it out, and if someone's stoked on it, then they'll probably, and they can, then they might buy it, you know? Yeah, indeed. Well, as you say, all, the whole music industry as a whole has, of course, become quite commoditized and we as consumers are of course demanding more and more uh, as you say the instant gratification that we're looking for that's of course one thing and if you think back to well maybe even 20 years ago that was completely different um, but how do you then see that evolving for a well let's say a, a more Eurorack specific way going forward so how do you foresee the future of Eurorack for the next five or ten years um like in a sales or like like in a like you know like marketing tactic or more like in like a philo philosophical sense well maybe maybe a combination so uh i'm just curious to see because uh maybe not everyone here knows that so i i, I started doing eurorack a couple of months back i i haven't touched a synthesizer before january of this year and then i just got pulled in and i said well if i want to do this i want to document my story my story and my journey and what I have seen over the course of the last couple of months is already a lot of evolution is happening within Eurorack just in the course of, of months. So I do foresee that the whole Eurorack sphere will evolve into something that we can't foresee currently. And I'm interested to hear what your view on that already is. But also I'm, I'm interested to see how you foresee WMD um, uh, evolving as a company or as a as a maker and also as a um, as a create creativity hub. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm curious too. I mean, I think that when it comes to the future of the Eurorack scene, I I I don't know. I mean, as far as bigger names getting into it and things like that, it's just like it's obviously been an exciting game, uh, and some people have experimented with it but i've also just kind of like watched a lot of bigger companies get in and get out real quick you know mm -hmm. so i don't know if i can say i believe it will get any bigger or or not um i think it's around to stay i think you're going to see a lot more artists using it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think you're going to see a lot more people performing because i think that that is one of the most appetizing part or appealing parts of it is that, you know, it's, it's, you can create a system that's completely you, 100% you. Yeah. And 
you designed it and then you can put that thing in a suitcase and get on a plane and I think that that's just insane and now when you show up and play a show it's like you know I struggle right now with wanting to play on a large stage a tall stage because I'd rather play on the floor where people can see what's going on and I think yeah. that you know that speaks to the fact and people would people appreciate that you know because they want to see what's going on it's and I think that that's going to open up a lot of avenues for electronic musicians as far as like live performances and not just DJs. Yeah. And like, I think that one of the coolest things that I've been seeing recently is that like the music for live performance via Eurorack has changed dramatically, like from just being like a bunch of house and techno only to like a lot more ambient getting played live, a lot more ambient showcases getting booked. A lot more cool, like, rat electro stuff, like, glitchy stuff, you know, people just kind of, like, going all over the place. So yeah. I think that, like, that's going to, I think that's going to blow up. But, yeah, as far as, like, what companies are going to do and what WM, WMD is going to do, I mean, I have no idea. I think stay the course. <laughs> um, and WMD is just trying to make the coolest stuff we possibly can. And I think yeah. that that's... That is got to be the model as far as like instrument makers just in general is like you got to make the coolest instruments you can whether it's just a really cool looking guitar that sounds great or it's you know a Euro rack module that just unlocks some other door or something that makes it so you don't so your hands are free to do something else you know I think that all those things are priorities but I don't mm -hmm. really have like a clear vision of what it could be, and yeah. I don't really want to speculate too much because I'm <laughs> always wrong. <laughs> Absolutely, but maybe maybe a bit closer to home then. So, any, anything in particular uh, you're working on right now that you can share without breaking any sort of NDA? Yeah, so we uh, we shared a, a, an oscillator prototype at Knobcon, and wow. um, I'm really excited about it. It's kind of the continuation or or replacement, you might say, for the Spectrum Oscillator, which we had for a while with the WMD SSF collaboration. Yeah. Um, so it's just our new Oscillator offering, and um, I'm really excited about it. It's got you know all the normal waveforms you could expect, but then it's got some really cool alternative uh, waveforms, such as like the we're calling it the Alpha Wave right now because it's inspired by the Alpha Juno. But it's a saw wave with a little window cut out of it in the middle, and you can pulse, you can uh, PW in that window, and you can uh, add up to four windows, which gives you a really nice harmonic over the top. Um, oh, wow. And then it's got uh, analog, an all analog super saw, which is pretty cool. So it's an analog uh, emulate. It's so funny. It's an analog emulation, right? So it's like literally, <laughs> we figured out how to how to. Um, emulate like a digital super saw, so like seven saw waveforms on top of each other in analog using uh, resets and LFOs to sweep those around to make it sound like a super saw, but it's super fat and has that analog character. Oh, wow. Wants and, loves. and it's only 8 HP, so it's also like, and it's, all, and it's got through zero FM, which is exciting. So that is, all of those that, that is something I'm really looking forward to then. HP gonna be great because you know oscillators i feel like big oscillators are silly there's no reason for an oscillator to be big mm -hmm. no I'm, I'm i'm with you on that so so currently my go-to oscillator is the um the Orna by nano which does have well like, like you said some of the more special wave waveforms that do have uh, pwm on typ typical not pwmable uh, waveforms and i think that that's really interesting and i'm, I'm really intrigued by that analog super cell uh are, are you guys at all schooled in, in, in uh, uh, the more physical analyses like Fourier analyses or those kind of things? I'm not. <laughs> I'm sure no, the, the that's, that's, the, that's the physicist slash astrophysicist in me still asking those kind of questions. Sorry for that. Um, no, I'm, sure but... that the, I'm sure that the other guys are, you know, I mean, they're like all about research and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm, I'm very far away from the engineer uh, and design side. 
Oh, no worries, no worries. So in, in regards to, as you say, well, this, 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 this next thing is going to be an all analog approach. Is that in any way influenced by the, well, the, 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 uh, the microcontroller shortages uh, currently? Or are you at least impacted by that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that I wouldn't say this oscillator was going to happen either or, and we were already working on it. But then, yeah, as far as the shortage goes, it's like we've got this we're working on. It does have a microcontroller on it for like switching of modes and stuff, but it's very, it's a very uh, low power and, as far as I know now, it's accessible. I'm pretty sure William already bought like a lot of them just so we'd have them. But um, the uh, yeah, I mean, the part shortage is really hurting, man. I mean, like, it's, we, yeah. we have been, um, we've paid, we've paid for some parts. We've paid 10 times what we used to pay for them just so we can get the project made and get, and, you know, continue people working. Um, cause, you know, if we, if we like stop, if we just don't make modules, and not only do we not sell modules, but then also, like, we don't have work for our employees, and that's not cool at all. So, I mean, like, we're trying mm -hmm. to, keep things going and like we've I know like I don't know if we've gotten hit with any counterfeit stuff but I'm definitely worried about buying stuff and you know finding out that it's messed that it's just not even real but um we you know it's like we've spent so much money just on parts alone and William's yeah. job turned into spending you know instead of spending four hours a week or whatever it used to be on parts ordering it's pretty much the only thing he does yeah. It's just like searching for parts. And so, yeah, we are, we've got that. We've got a, got a couple other modules in the works. Um, I, I, I actually wouldn't even say in the works. We've got ideas mm -hmm. that are completely inspired by, the, by just only doing analog because of the part shortage. Yeah. Um, like we haven't been, we, we've been so busy with other stuff, we haven't even like broken ground on those at all. I can imagine. But if it imagine. keeps continuing, then yeah, we're going to be doing a lot more analog stuff in the next couple of years. I can imagine. Perfect. I'm really looking forward to that, both as a <laughs> as a as a as a consumer, but also as um, as a content creator as well. I'm really interested to that. Um, another quick question uh, is, of course, that you already touched upon the the SSF collaboration. Is that something that you uh, see? Continuing with SSF or other uh, Eurec makers to find that that collaboration approach. Um, I don't really know. As far as the SSF goes, we we've been phasing out those products, and we're no longer going to be making them. Okay. Um, and then as far as but that collaboration happened in like 2012 through thir 13, and then they put the modules out, and then they didn't really do any more collaboration after that. Um, mm -hmm. as far as like designing stuff goes is, and, and I'm speaking from an observer's point. I'm not, I'm not William. I'm not Andrew. I don't, I don't know all the details and mm -hmm. I don't, um, but yeah, as far as like my observation goes, they kind of just did that because one, they both really respected each other as far as designers and they both really wanted to expand their lines to have like all the bread and butter modules at an affordable price. And yeah. Um, and that's what those modules were. And then, you know, we've gotten, now we've got a lot more players in, in the game of the affordable modules. So yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't really know as far as that goes, but yeah, the collaboration thing, William and our team right now, like we're pretty tight and we're all like really stoked on what each other are doing. So I'm not sure that we're really looking to do that, but mm -hmm. if it came, you know, if it came, we would definitely consider it. Yeah, it's not something that you would disqualify out of hand. Yeah, exactly. Oh, great. Well, still, I'm looking forward to that. So I already see that I've already gone <laughs> 50 minutes over time. So what I typically want to do is I want to do 20 minutes interview and then open it up for 20 minutes for Q&A. Um, so I, I always have one question. So I, I mentioned that I'm still fairly new to synthesizer, to modular, to Eurorack. Uh, what would be your number one piece of advice for someone in my position? Uh, have fun. <laughs> That's have a good time. Str straight to the point, absolutely. I love that. Yeah, I mean, I think that 
there's so many ways to get into it and there's so many ways to do it and I think that the you know you can really like you can um, you can go the route of buying, you know, spending 10 grand and not knowing what is going on with any of the stuff that you just bought, or you can go the route of buying $400 worth of stuff and just seeing what can happen. Yeah. I went that route because I was broke when I got into modular. So I got into modular two years before I got into WMD. Um, I was working, or I was in a band and I played lots of, with guitar pedals and stuff and then this guy came up to me and told me that I should get into modular. So I started researching it. And um, so, you know, like everybody knows, it's expensive. So I bought like three modules and a happy ending kit. I smoked one of the modules right away by plugging it in backwards because it no! was a super <laughs> old module. And so I finally figured out that I could do something with, uh, with the stuff that I had. And what I ended up doing was using an oscillator to clock my sequencer at audio rate because I had an 8 at Pittsburgh analog sequencer. So then that created kind of a cool, weird, steppy waveform. And then I sequenced it with a MIDI to CV converter. And then I ran that through a bunch of distortion. And then I immediately just turned that into a sample and started playing guitar over it. And I made like this badass rock song that I still think is one of the coolest songs I've ever made. Nice. Never put it out because I didn't have a project for it. but think it was I just had so much fun with it and I had nothing I had no idea what I was doing I made this thing that was pretty atonal but I figured out that if I played in some in whatever key I was playing in then it worked good enough and I did it and I just had such a great time and I think that that would be my number one thing is don't worry too much and if you're already playing music like you said you weren't really like in synths before but if you're already doing synths, I always tell people, don't try to replace them right away. Don't try and replace your computer right away. No. Just make it, learn it, joke, you know, joke around with it, have fun, see what goes on, and, and yeah. then that's it. And, and there, are no, there are no wrong choices there either. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, absolutely. No, I appreciate that. And I, 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 I'm, I, I will follow up on this and make sure that I listen to that recording that you just mentioned. I'm, I'm intrigued by that. So I, yeah. I, I did do a lot of other music uh, before I dove into synthesizer and modular. And I still, as, as I said, one of the key things I want to do is I want to document my journey so that others can, uh, can learn from that as well. Uh, but I love the approach that you say, well, just go at it and don't worry there are no wrong choices have fun i appreciate that absolutely so before i uh want to open up the floor i always uh give my my guests uh and in this case that's you alex uh the chance if you have any questions for me that's awesome so like as far as music goes, you said you, you played a little bit. Were you playing guitar, or what instruments did you play before? You well, to be, to be quite honest, so I I used to front a uh, a black metal band back in high school, and oh. I've done <laughs> a lot of punk and uh, and metal bands following that. Uh, but it's always either well, make it as uh, as a vocalist. I wouldn't call, go as far as call myself a singer. Uh, but it's all <laughs> yeah, that, that's just me being brutally honest, and um, so that's mainly it. And then of course I've been I've been I've been dabbling around with guitar, and I've been dabbling around with with keys. And over the course of the last well, let's say um, ten months, I've become more and more serious. And that's uh, that's one of the the key things that we now have these 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 shows why we now have the the youtube channel that's uh, that's that's growing quite well and while we are bringing all of these people that are now listening to this and the rest of the discord together so i'm i'm pretty stoked about that i've never expected this to happen for sure yeah i, I so yeah i started free boutique you know for over four years ago now and it's like it started with you know just the people that worked at wmd playing to no one and now it's like you know 40 or 50 people every every time and it's the show we do on a tuesday night so it's pretty fun i, I the growth is always cool to watch absolutely um, so now that you've been in modular for a while what is your um what's like the part of it that's like most appealing to you is it the 
is it the sequencing or is it like the control aspect or is it the sound design aspect or it's both the the sound design approach so um where you truly get to play along with with waves and waveforms and those kind of things so i do i do come from a from a physical back from a physics background so just working with with waves and and just seeing how you can immediately interact with that that's one thing uh but then of course if you then add things like uh like the control that you have and as you said well you can make your own instrument so i'm in the lucky position that i've got some modules that I can just mix and match and I can truly just wait for these 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 happy little accidents to happen and I think that that is the the thing that really well energizes myself and that is uh, fueling my creativity is just go ahead and and do something crazy see if it works out and once it works then try to understand what happens but don't try to design something up front just go at it and then you'll make sense of it afterwards and then you can replicate it then you can can document it and then you can well make beautiful things of it oh yeah exactly i mean i think that that's exactly what i was saying earlier too it's like yeah the first stuff i made was exactly like that and you know i need to get more in the i'm like here looking at modules right now trying to buy some modules that i've never used before that a lot of people, you know, just like I, I've never really owned too much mutable stuff. So I'm like, I want to buy some mutable stuff because I feel like I would get into it. I love the sounds they make, but that happy accident thing, like, you know, it's just that's the beauty. And that's so that's awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, great. Well, thank you so much, uh, Alex. So then uh, I said, so I want to open it up to the uh, to the rest of the gang that have joined. Uh, let me just quickly check the companion channel before we do that. In the meantime, if you want to ask a question and go give them a comment, just raise your hand and we'll get you up on the stage. Uh, so MTOP already commented, your comment on no culture working from home is spot on. Um, <clears throat> I think that that's, well, that's even true in my, in my day job as well, where you do miss that. And uh, how, how are you at WMD then trying to address that, 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 that cultural uh, approach, the, 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 the human interaction approach? Any, any specific strategies that you guys are applying for that? Well, we've got a party <coughs> at the shop slated for Friday. Mm -hmm. So we've got some new employees that started over the past couple of months. So we're going to try and get everybody together. We, you know, we used to always like go out for drinks or do cookouts and things like that. And so we're, we've, we've kept the cookout thing alive. It may Great. not be as often as we used to do it, um, but we're still doing it. And, you know, we've done it through COVID because we can we can get together in our parking lot. We have a nice sized parking lot so everyone can be outside. And we have uh, one guy who's an excellent cook and uh, we're doing a, what's he doing? Gumbo this week. Oh, so wow. it'll be nice for the kind of like fall vibes. And yeah, just getting together, um, trying to do that. We do meetings in person once a month now. We were doing them, trying to do them once a week, but they kind of just threw off the day, you know? It's like, you know, a whole meet, like a, a meeting where everyone has to drive a half an hour or so, you know, whatever, however long. It's yeah. gonna take about 20 to 30 minutes to commute. And so that's an hour gone. <coughs> and then you're there and then you hang out and that's, you know, you did the meeting, but then you talk for an hour and a half and then, you know, the day's gone. So it's like, we've started doing a more uh, on a monthly basis and then you know, we've always had the 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 freak boutique parties and stuff, and that always that's always helped, and that helps now too. It's just like everybody getting together. Yeah. For music. <coughs> oh, that's great. So, where in where in Colorado are you guys based? We are in Denver proper. In Denver proper, so not in one of the the surrounding uh, areas. Yeah, we're in Denver. We're like ten minutes from downtown, just like right off the highway. Oh, that's great. Superb, superb. Yeah, I need to get back there. Um, so let's see. Do we have anyone else who has any questions? Uh, either to... Uh, oh, I see that Noah has raised uh, his hand. So let's see if we can invite him up on stage. So Noah, please uh, accept the invite and you'll be able to uh, to ask your question or give your comments. There you go. Noah, the floor is yours. Uh, you guys can hear me? Yep, yeah, perfect. Please. 
Okay, so I'm actually just joined, so uh, this might have already been answered. But I was uh, kind of have uh, just a few quick questions. One, how how big is your team? Uh, we're I think we're around 18 people right now. Oh, wow, that's a lot bigger than I would have expected. Because isn't like uh, I know um, I'm blanking on the name now, but. Um, Shoot, like, is that like a pretty typical team size for um, like your rec companies? That that seems like big to me. I mean, I know you guys are on the larger side, but I'm yeah, just so it's pretty big. Um, we have we have the you know like it's we're, we're very fortunate that we have three engineers. Um, so we have the owner, we have a hardware engineer and a software engineer, um, and then we have people that run our machines. So we have multiple you know automated automation machines so we have the pick and place machine we have a selective solder machine and then we have uh, a engraver that engraves all our panels and then on top of that we have all of the people that are just that are putting stuff together so um and doing hand assembly so you know you take a module that has uh, all this most of the soldering done but you still got to put the panel and all the all the screws and nuts on it and stuff like that and then we have a testing team. Um, one thing about WMD is we also are a contract manufacturer. So we don't only make WMD products. We make products for um, some other companies as well. And um, that has a lot to do with our size. You know? And at one point we were like, that was kind of like one of the, that was like a mission was to get bigger and do that more. Um, yeah. Much more focused on just building the WMD brand and just like doing the uh, contract thing for like the homies and the people, like the clients we already have, but we are not really right. clients. So we're not really trying to. Cool. So uh, I guess my next question, I, and keeping my questions kind of focused around the industry because that's uh, what I'm interested in here. But uh, just based on your own experience, do you see the, uh, your rack scene is uh, growing. I've heard like a few different answers to this. Some people say uh, that they feel like it really is. Some people are saying that it's like kind of been stagnant since like the you know big jump that it had a few years ago. Um, you know, what what do you see with that? I mean, I think the pandemic grew the scene quite a bit as far as like our team, yeah. and, like our brand and stuff. Like, I feel like the past two years like we finally got to the place like that we wanted to be as far as notoriety and i i don't really know if that's just because people started watching my videos more or like people started using our modules and talking about it more or just that you know sheer numbers of people getting into it are happening you know but um i'd say that it's like i wouldn't say that it's exploding exploding anymore um i think that it's still growing but i think that like you know if it were exploding, we'd see some big moves happening from like larger instrument companies, and I don't really see where. Yeah. You know that. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, yeah, I was kind of referring to a few years ago when like Roland stepped into the scene, started making modules. But yeah, I definitely see that not much has happened there. And then, okay, last question, then I'll kind of stop commandeering this. Okay. Um, <laughs> cool. Um, so. Oh, I think we lost you there for a bit, Noah. Yeah, we lost you for Just repeat your question, sorry. Just can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, so one thing that I've seen as a focus from WMD is like kind of the performance aspect. Um, and I've heard a lot of people like speculate that that's like where, you know, modular is going, especially with like, you know, people like call in vendors and like a bunch of guys who like perform live. Uh, do you guys uh, like have is that like your your new like prerogative as a company? I'm just kind of curious with that, with you know some of your like more performance oriented tools and modules. I mean, like yeah, 100. percent um, But like at the same time, like I don't really treat perform. I don't really like the word performance to just mean live on a stage in front of people. Um, I think that our main goal is to make our stuff like intuitive and like uh, like ready to develop muscle memory. So whether you're using it live or you're using it in the studio or you're using whatever, it's like just quick to 
like change the things you want to do and make the sounds happen that you want to have happen, you know? But yeah, I mean, I think that like performative uh, interfaces is like pretty much like number one. It's like cool sounds and stuff like that. And, and then performative interfaces are definitely like our top priority. Great. Thanks for answering my questions. That was awesome. Great questions, Noah. Thanks for uh, for joining us. Anyone else who wants to uh, join on stage, or if you uh, if you don't feel like joining on stage, but you do have a question, just drop them in the companion channel, and I'll uh, read them out loud. So I think that um, we've got all the questions answered. Well, Alex, first of all. Uh, thanks again for joining. Um, any 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 closing thoughts from your end? Um, no, I mean I think just like, like I said earlier, just keep having fun and uh, like that's what we're gonna do. So, <laughs> that's, Absolutely. Uh, that's, hopefully, you know things keep going in in the right direction, and we can we can get parts to build stuff, and we can continue making it. That's that's our only real. Uh, mission right now I guess no perfect and I yeah uh, I'll have to agree with that um, so everyone that's that that's joined and Alex as well thanks everyone for your time today um, this has been a presentation of the modular clubhouse uh, please stick around on the uh, discord server we have a very active and very friendly community here as well um, also uh, please check out the YouTube channel uh, the link to that is in the companion channel. The last couple of uh, videos have been on uh, the noise reap anomaly, which is a quite interesting VCF with a intentionally broken wave folder. So have a look at that. Uh, it's it's it blew me away. And um, yeah, we're going to be releasing some other videos in the uh, in the next couple of in the next couple of days. So please make sure that you are uh, at least subscribed or. Otherwise, just keep checking up on it. And as always, if you have any questions, any suggestions, any feedback, or if you just want to have a, uh, <laughs> a person to talk to, just drop me a line at jesper at the modular clubhouse.nl or just uh, reach out through me to me on Discord. Uh, for now, everyone, please stay safe, stay healthy, um, take care of yourselves, and uh, hope to see everyone soon again. Thanks so much. Cheers. Thank you.